Carl Rodder and in this week's Investor Spotlight, we're going to be talking about quality and growth stocks. And of course, to do that, Ausbiz's Danny Akuye joins me as well. Danny, uh, great to see you there. Um, first questions first, everyone's concerned about recession, but equities are well holding up okay. I mean, is this time different? I'd be surprised if this time is different because it's very easy for people to create narratives and often they take a lead from where share prices are going and that gives them a false sense of hope. But if you actually look below the indices, particularly in the US, that's where you see the disparity between the growth narratives coming through, the AI trends, versus some of those cyclical stocks, uh, which are down 30% this year. And that's something that we talked about last week. So is it different this time? No, probably not. It just takes a while for the process and the cycle to play out. Indeed. And in Australia, we just keep getting these downgrades. Baby bunting came on the back of Universal Stores and Adairs. I mean, they're seeing huge negative falls in growth year on year of up to 15%. That's big. That is big. And uh, of course, perhaps a proverbial canary in the coal mine there. But let's talk about what we wanted to really get to uh, uh, the core of today, which is, well, growth and defensive, uh, sorry, quality and defensive stocks. Uh, before we do get into a few names, let's get a definition. What is a quality and defensive stock? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, very hard to specify in a nanosecond, but basically quality stocks have a proven track record over a period of time to be able to produce earnings. Um, they don't get themselves into, into trouble. They've got very strong balance sheets. They invest for the future through R&D. They can make good quality acquisitions and add to earnings. So typically they're companies that um, you would compare a quality growth to a, a Microsoft and an Apple in the US, for example, and our major health biotech company is CSL here in Australia. Well, let's kick off that uh, conversation about CSL because you like it. It's cracked above $300 recently. What's the investment case here, do you think, for CSL? Well, it's very much a um, post-lockdown recovery story because its, it's big blood plasma uh, division was heavily impacted by lockdowns. So basically, people couldn't go out and give blood. And uh, so you're seeing a recovery there. You also have um, new, very specialised products coming on board for that company. You also have the Southern Hemisphere flu season because they've got Sequiris, which is a very large flu vaccine provider and they have a new acquisition that they made in Switzerland Vifor which is going to be coming on stream again the company is very strategic about making acquisitions where they can add the businesses to their existing operations in the CSL style so not necessarily integrating but actually create value so for example the likes of Sequiris the, the flu vaccine business was not nearly as successful as it is now Interesting. Okay, so that's uh, a kind of a defensive and quality name. Uh, one that has a uh, pretty strong association with, uh, I guess, defensiveness perhaps is, is Transurban, another one that we're going to look at today. Again, what's the investment case here potentially? Okay, so this is a longer term demographic growth story because people need to use toll roads. Uh, typically with infrastructure companies like these, they have a lot of debt on the balance sheet. So you have to actually look on the hood for this one. And what's so important for Transurban is first of all, in terms of their debt, a lot of it is longer dated debt rather than short term dated debt. And this is important because when interest rate rises come through, the longer dated debt does not necessarily go up in terms of the cost. They have to, you know, it might be renegotiated in two or three years down the track when rates have come back down. But the most important thing is the toll roads are CPI inflation indexed, which means as costs go up, effectively the consumer, the people that use the toll roads, it's not good for them, but they will effectively be paying for that increased privilege. Australia has strong demographic tailwinds and uh, it's currently yielding about 4% for full year 24. So if you look where the cash rate is in Australia, it's probably going to go higher than 4% as some people are expecting at the moment. So you could argue it's a great company 
it's got all the long-term features, but short-term it might just be a little bit fully priced when you compare to the risk-free rate of putting your money in the bank. And that's how some of the big investors would be looking at it. However, when we do see interest rates come down, as well as all these other features, that's when these stocks fly. But actually, Transurban's been performing pretty well considering. Yeah, and around that sort of 14 or $15 mark at the moment. Okay, last but not least, we were talking about stories before. The biggest story in the world right now has to be AI, and maybe one proxy on our market is Next DC. Do we buy into the hype of that stock? Yeah, it's really interesting. I've been reading quite a few broker reports on that one. So this is um, effectively a data center um, operator. So they build them, they operate them. Um, they've been terribly successful. So AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, they're all basically companies that would use these next DC data centers. They've recently had an equity raising about 618 million <clears throat> and that was at $10.80 a share, which is you know, 20% lower. And that has been to fund offshore expansion. But the most important thing for people to understand is that this stock eventually will become a utility like an annuity because at the moment they're investing heavily as they build out data centers. Once they have fulfilled that, they will start paying income to investors. But the secular growth trend that's the real kicker here is the fact that the transition to off-premise cloud storage as we know it, okay, so you take your servers away from the office and you put them in these data centers, that continues to grow and the kicker is AI because once you start to integrate all these new software packages like ChatGPT, you not only need much better processing units, graphics card, which is what Nvidia does, but you need more storage capacity. So the reason why this stock has been quite firm off the back of Nvidia and the AI story is it because it's a direct beneficiary of this huge secular trend. Danny, a few quality and <laughs> defensive names there for all of us to consider. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Okay, well that's it for this week's Investor Spotlight, but join us next week. We'll put more issues under the spotlight.